this morning's uh, message. Uh, that's a good Sunday school lesson. I didn't even know I was going to get that blessing. Amen. Yeah, Beautiful. Well, I like it. I like it. We're in the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter number 8, verse 1. Keep praying uh, for us. We need all the prayers we can get. And uh, hopefully this thing will pass and we'll have church again. So our first Sunday in January won't be long. Amen. We probably got another four weeks to go, and then we'll try it again. Amen. See what happens. First Samuel 8, 1, it came to pass when Samuel was old, he made his sons judges over Israel. Uh, he gives his names, Joel, Abib, verse 2. But his sons, uh, verse 3, walked not in his ways, but turned aside after lucre and took bribes, perverted judges. Elders of Israel gathered themselves. They came to Samuel. And uh, verse 5, he said, You're old, man, and your son is blind like you. He's taking bribes. Amen. But the thing displeased Samuel. And he said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. The Lord said, Samuel, hearken unto the voice of the people and all that thy say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, and I should not reign over them. For in all the works which I have done since the day I brought them out of Egypt, even this day, where they have not forsaken, they have forsaken me. Serve other gods, and so do also unto thee. Now therefore hearken to my voice, how be it, yet protest soundly unto them, and show them the manner of king that shall reign over them. Amen. So we see verse number one, Samuel. He was a seer. They call him a prophet later, and the Bible describes that. He was a man of God. And Samuel got old. Uh, that's what happens in nature. Amen. You get old. You're a little baby. You start off in diapers and you get real old and you wind up ending up again in diapers. Amen. Some of y'all get that. Some of y'all not. Amen. Amen. And uh, so he decides the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to trust my boys and I'm going to make them judges. Only problem, them two boys, uh, they want money. Mm -hmm. They want money. They want what money can buy. And they was hungry for money. And they had seen Dad, the old man, uh, struggle. He lived in an old house, drove an old car, not being able to buy fancy new clothes. You know, they went to Goodwill, uh, bought their clothes, and get a chance to go out. Uh, and, you know, I mean, he saw the old man, the heartaches that he had. All the tears that he had. They saw how many hours the old man put into his ministry. And uh, them two boys made up their mind. That kind of life ain't for me. Amen. I, 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 instead, I'm going to use my position that dad has put me in as a judge. And I'm going to make, make sure that position pays off for me. I know a lot of people out there in politics, they get in the stock market, they're out there playing golf with their buddies, you know, the presidents of big corporations. Their buddies will tell them, you know, by the way, this is fixing to happen where our stock price is going to drop. And my advice you sell, of course, they can't say that because it's legally against the law to get inside information. I never could understand that a lot. But, uh, I know a lot of congressmen, they've done that, senators have done that. They've sold their stock. And then uh, eight months, nine months later, they'll buy the same stock again because their corporate buddy will tell them, by the way, things are going up. Thank you. God bless you. I know a lot of preachers that way. They've sold out for money. Yep. Amen. And uh, they'll go preach places that they told us don't preach at. Mm. Amen. My old pastor, Brother Jack Wood, uh, I remember he was always afraid that one of his preacher boys would wind up in uh, preaching for the Southern Gospel because they have to touch God on them. As long as you preach them glory messages, uh, messages about Jesus, you can make some big offerings. And some of them big churches, I mean, one offer today is you know twenty five thousand dollars. You can make a real good living if you got any juice on you, amen. And so some sold out for money, some preach for money, some beg for money. I see it all the time. People begging online, you know. Can you help me? Can you help me? Can you help my ministry? Can you help this? Can you help that? You know, they're always asking for help. You know, help me this, help me that, help right. me this. Oh, come on, man. Why 
don't you just trust God and ask God to help you? Amen. I remember one. We was close. And uh, he was a man of business. He was a man of God. But somewhere along the line, uh, he wanted uh, money more than he did want nothing to God. It cost him everything. I still pray for him. I still love him. I love the enemies. Some of y'all won't get that. Amen. Amen. Did Samuel pray about letting his son become judges? Well, let's start off with no. Amen? Because there's only two answers. Let's say no. So I can preach a little while on. You need to pray about everything or you'll wind up making bad decisions. Get in the will of God. Amen? So I, I believe that's a good message. You ought to preach that. But let's use the other one and say, yes, he did. He did. And Samuel prayed and asked God, should I make my boys uh, judges? And uh, God said, yeah, go ahead and do it. I know you don't like that. Amen. I'll, I'll prove it. There was a man in the book of Judges. A man went uh, after his concubine. She left him. She was out there. Amen. The Bible says she was out there whoring. And he started heading home. And uh, uh, he finally finds her. Uh, after a while, his father-in-law finally lets him go. And he decides we're out of here. He's heading back to the house. He's got his concubine with him. And they wind up in a city of... Benjamites, and the, and the men of the city wanted to know the man. And when they wanted to know the man, I'm not saying they wanted to, you know, shake hands or anything like that. All I mean, right. this is a, a man. So instead, uh, somebody inside says, well, here's my concubine, and you go ahead and abuse her. She winds up dying. He takes her home. When he gets home, he cuts her up in pieces. I mean, that's, per I, that's pretty perfect right there. He cut her, in, cut her in pieces. He sent, in, uh, he sent them to all the tribes of uh, Israel. Hmm. Israel goes by. There ain't nothing like this ever happened before. Right. And so Israel shows up. They want to know what the heck's going on. He tells them his side of the story. They all go to the tribe of Benjamin. And uh, they said, uh, you know, give us the men of Belial that did this to this uh, woman. And uh, let us punish him, put him to death, and then everything will be okay. And the tribe of Benjamin refused. So the children of, of Israel go to the house of God, Judges 20, 18. And the children of Israel arose, went up to the house of God, asked the counsel of God, and said, Which of us shall go up first to battle against the children of Benjamin? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up first. Who said it? The Lord. The Lord said it. The Lord said it. The Lord said, Y'all need to go first. Right. Verse 19, children of Israel rose up in the morning, camped against Gil, uh, Gibbish, and the men of Israel went out and battled Benjamin, and the men of Israel put themselves array in the fight, and the children of Israel, uh, Benjamin, uh, came forth, and they destroyed the ground of the Israelites in the day, 22,000 men, that's verse 21. The people of the men encouraged themselves, set the battle array, again in the right place where they put themselves, uh, and the first day they lost 22,000 men. Hmm. Verse 23, children of Israel went up and went before the Lord until Eve and asked counsel of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up again to battle against the children of Benjamin, my brother? And the Lord said, Go up against him. Who said it? The Lord. The Lord. Didn't the, the Lord, Lord say it the first time and they lost? Yep. See, they didn't ask if we're going to win. They just said, Should we go fight? Lord, is this a good idea? Should we go fight? Hmm. And the children of Israel came near, the children of Benjamin, the second day. Benjamin went forth again, and 18,000 men died, verse 25. Verse 26, they all went to the house of God, wept, sat there before the Lord, fasted that day until the evening, offered burnt offerings, peace offerings. Children of Israel required the Lord for the Ark of the Covenant was there. And Phinehas, the son of Elzar, the son of Aaron, stood before it these days, saying, Shall I yet go again on the battle against the children of Benjamin? My brother, shall I cease? And the Lord said, Go up for tomorrow and deliver. Who said it? The Lord. The Lord. 40,000 men. All they do with the battle. Uh, 
uh, so you won't be in suspense. 40,000 men lost their lives. What did the Lord say? Yes. 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 I didn't include how many men died in Benjamin. 40,000. Right. Plus all the ones that lost their lives in Benjamin. And, uh, I mean, that's a lot of people. Yep. That's a lot of people. That's a whole bunch of people. Did God speak to the children of Israel? Yeah, three times. Twice they lost, they finally won. Why did God, why did God do that? Well, the Bible says at the very end of the book of Judges, everybody, everybody was doing what was right in their own eyes. Amen. So they all gathered and asked God, should we go fight against our brother? I said, yeah. So when Samuel prayed and asked, Lord, do you want my boys to become judges? You know what God said? I think I'm going to use that. Yeah. Let's make them judges. Did God know that they were going to take bribes? Absolutely. God knows everything. Amen. God is putting this thing into action and into play. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I, I, I'm just telling you, God knows what he's doing. So I believe sure that Samuel did pray. That's right. Yep. God knew the heart of the people, and they weren't right with God, so God allowed Samuel to put his sons as judges. They went after money. Hmm. And we see here Samuel here as an old man. He has lost touch with his two sons. Samuel trusted his instincts. He trusted his prayer life. You got to stand. Sometimes you just got to sit back and you got to realize, amen, I was out of touch. Amen. I mean, I was out of touch. I didn't realize these two boys were capable of doing that. You know, the heart's deceitful and above all wicked. I, I, I mean, in your heart, that's what your heart wants to do with you. you got to fight that thing constantly. That's why the Bible says mortify the body daily. Kill, 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 kill yourself. Amen? Because you've got to die. Because if you don't, yourself's going to get you into major problems. Right. I mean, here are them two boys. They've studied his life the whole time, his ministry, his walk with God. Problem is, Samuel thinks, uh, Samuel doesn't realize he's out of touch with his sons. I know pastors, other pastors, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. They put their son to become pastor of the church and they've retired, they've gone on to something else. You know what's happened? Nothing. Maybe for a few years it might last. After that, they get out. I know some churches, uh, they put their sons in, and it was the will of God. The church just prospered and continued. Right. God knows what he's doing. Amen. Yep, sure does. He knows exactly what he's doing. And all the elders of Israel got themselves together. And Samuel, they said, you boys ain't walking that way. And the elders of Israel see the problem. Sammy, you're old. And you've lost touch hmm. with your own boys and you can't make good decisions anymore. I was taught how to become a pastor. They said, number one, you can't be too, too young. If you're too young, you'll take out your sword and cut everybody's head off. Uh, just to prove that you can use your sword. So you'll cut people and, you know, make a bloody mess when you shouldn't have. You should have had more patience. An old pastor, though, is too old. He's already seen the bloodshed if he pulls out his sword. So he'll hesitate. I see the problem in my church. I know there's a problem, hmm. but I'm not going to handle it. I'm going to wait. Sometimes it's a good time to wait. That's what God says. Right. But sometimes when you're too old, you make bad decisions. And the church will put up with somebody that will make bad decisions for a while. So you make too many. And uh, then they want a new leadership, a new pastor. It reminds me of the uh, Dallas Cowboys. Tom, Tom Landry was the head coach. He was a Christian man. He uh, was a bomber pilot and for World War II. He became an engineer, was taught how to, you know, how to think like an engineer. When he became coach of the Cowboys, he lost the first six seasons. 
And uh, they won't let you do that nowadays, amen. Uh, six seasons of losing. Now, back in those days, they did, but not, not now. And uh, Tom Landry's football plays were so complex because he was an engineer. I want X to go over here and O to go over there. And he's got all these little drawings in there. And he had, for six years, the players could not figure out what to do. <laughs> they were so complicated. <laughs> so finally, Tom Landry had to dumb down his own plays so that the players could figure it out. So all these preachers that use them high for looking words, you know, to put it way in the top, and everybody goes, what the heck is he talking about? Man? Nobody knows. Right. you got to learn to put it on the bottom shelf. Amen. When you're presenting Christ, you got to put him on the bottom shelf. Amen. Amen. You say, well, I don't know what to say. You know, when I'm telling somebody about Jesus, just tell them what God's done for you in your life. Just give them your testimony. This is what God did. This is what God did. I mean, put it on the bottom shelf. Amen. For 20 years afterwards, they were in the playoffs. Every year, they won three championships. And, uh, but toward the end, it got old. Been a long time. 29 years mm -hmm. he coached. At the end, he started making this, uh, bad decisions. He had two quarterbacks, Roger Stallback, can't remember the other guy. And uh, no other team had ever attempted to do this. But, Rock, but Don Landry, his decision was, well, it's the machine. It's the plays that get the job done. Mm -hmm. Roger Staubach's mom had died that year. When they went to a two-team, uh, uh, two quarterbacks. And so after his mother died, he come to him and he said, listen, uh, I'm going to retire, but I'll, I'll, I'll come back and play if you'll let me call the plays. Tom Landry says, no. I designed the plays. I call the plays. And it's my way or the highway. <laughs> so Roger Staubach retired that year. Amen. 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 Problem is, he got old. And the NFL got smarter. They started using uh, algorithms. They had guys upstairs uh, looking, you know, with uh, binoculars and seeing how the plays were using. They were using all the latest and greatest technology. And they designed new plays to beat the Cowboys. Because everybody wanted to beat the Cowboys. They had promoted themselves as America's team. Tom Landry hated that. He said, you, all you're doing is putting a, a bullseye on our back, and every team's going to want to beat us. Right. He said, we, we can't be called that. Are you crazy? He said, everywhere we go, they're going to try to beat us. They're going to use twice as much energy to beat us. <laughs> Last couple of years of his career, Cowboys started losing. Tom Landry would not change his playbook. He wouldn't change it. Mm -mm. Problem is... But it has to change. We're going to stick with the old path. Well, I believe that. I believe you ought to stick with the old path in your own life. But at the same time, the people of 1950 and the year 2020, they look a bit different now. Mm -hmm. They've been brought up different. I mean, it's it just totally different. So for two years, they lost, and all the people wanted to fire. The owner wants to fire. The owner decides he wants to sell the Cowboys. It's just way too much for headaches for him. He takes bids. Everybody uh, bidded uh, money, a lot of money. But he's finally sold the, the, the Cowboys to Jerry Jones, who bidded less money. And the reason he let him uh, buy the Cowboys was he had one, one requirement only. He had to fire Tom Landry. If, I, if you buy the Cowboys, you're going to have to fire the coach. Hmm. And all the other guys before that offered more money, oh, no, we're going to keep him. We're going to keep him. We're just going to change the player. No, no. And that owner wanted Tom Landry gone and the management gone. And Jerry Jones bought it. He didn't have respect to tell the old man, Tom Landry, listen, it's time to retire. He just fired. He walked away martyr, amen? Amen. Tom Landry got out of touch with football. They interviewed him one time and later on in years, and he said, he said, what do you think about all these new players that want all this big money? And he said, well, you know, in our day, uh, he said, 
So when I was coaching, he said, you got to pay your dues first. And then once you paid your dues, then you, know, you got paid more. I told my son the same advice. You know why? Because I'm old. Yep. My advice is the same thing. You got to pay your dues first, son. I said, you got to learn your trade. Once you learn your trade, then you can go ask for more money. But they don't think this way anymore. Hmm. The new player said, I got so many years in my career. I need to get the money now before I retire. I got to get it now in case I get hurt. Right. I got to get a contract where I can make the biggest money I can make. Forget about the team. It's about me. You know, I work in sales. One of the biggest problems that we have is people that buy, the purchasing agents. And the purchasing agents are always changing jobs. So you got to start all over with the relationship that you have with the company. Because now they want to use their vendors, whoever took over. It might be five more purchasing agents go through that camp before you finally get back in again. Mm. And it's not like the old days where people would sign up with the company and work for 30 years. They just don't do that anymore. Everybody's out for the money. Tom Landry lost touch with the football. He lost touch with the, the players. He lost touch with the game. Samuels lost touch with his boys. He's lost touch with his ministry, and the elders want a king. Samuel told him, the Lord told Samuel, go ahead and do what they say. He said, they've, they've not rejected you, they've rejected me. That's in verse 7. They've been doing it since I brought them over from Egypt. Unto this day, wherein they've forsaken me, served other gods, so do they also unto thee. God told Samuel, now listen, old man, preacher, Pastor, evangelist, anybody that works in the ministry. He said, I know you thought Israel was getting spiritual help, and maybe at the beginning of your ministry they were, but here lately, they've been serving other gods. You're out of touch with your own ministry. I know you've been preaching. I know you've been praying. I know you've been fasting. I know you've been giving. God told Samuel, Israel's forsaken me, but they've also forsaken you. Hmm. You've lost touch. You lost touch with your boys. You lost touch with the ministry, with the elders. And God revealed it for the first time, everything that's going on in his ministry. You say, why didn't he tell him before? Because he knew Samuel. Samuel would have got depressed. He would have felt worthless. He would have doubted his ministry. Mm -hmm. You know, God knows what's best for you, for me, for the church, for our country, for the world. And God doesn't have to give you daily updates. Amen. How's it going? How's it going? He don't have to give you weekly updates. He doesn't give you monthly updates. Not even yearly update. God doesn't have to give you an update at all. God finally gives an update to Samuel. Oh, by the way, for the last 20 years, they ain't been listening. It's gone in one ear and out the other. They just take whatever they want. They'll listen to what they want. They'll apply that to the life of the rest. They just throw it away. Right. He said they just throw it away. I, I, you know, God knows what he's doing because if he would have told the old man, maybe the old man wouldn't have preached just as hard. Right. But now that he's old, he said, I think he can handle it. They quit listening to you following other idols. I'm afraid when we get to heaven, they're going to find out, a lot of preachers are going to find out. Mm -hmm. As my old pastor used to say, Bill Jack, he said, I say 90% of the church people that are here are going to die and go to hell. Hmm. He was talking about his independent Baptist. He wasn't talking about all the other churches that he doesn't even believe in. He said, I believe uh, there's a lot of folks here in here that think they're going to heaven, but they ain't never been born again. I, I, I'm just telling you that it's depressing news when God tells you, oh, by the way, they've been following after Ida for the last 20 years of your ministry. Mm. He said, argue to them. Go ahead, but give one more message what, what's all going to happen if they get a king. Oh, by the way, they're not going to listen to the message. He said, but that doesn't matter. The message still has to be preached. Amen. Did you get that? Yep. Amen. Even though Samuel's out of touch 
with his sons, with his family, with the elders, with his members, with the country, and they're all found out to idols. And even though God's already told Simon, listen, by the way, they're not going to listen. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't preach. Jeremiah kept telling the people of Israel, listen, uh, y'all have really got God upset. He's so upset he's going to put y'all all in uh, slaves for 70 years. Hmm. And after 70 years, after this generation's died, maybe your grandchildren come back. They'll come back and they'll rebuild Israel. But for now, you know, why don't you make the most of it? Give up. That way you don't have to die. Just give up. Turn yourself over to the enemy. His message was not popular. And the people did not follow it. <laughs> they fought. God already told, us, told them, amen, they're not going to listen. They're not going to listen. That's one of the hardest things that God has to teach a preacher. It doesn't matter whether they listen or whether they don't listen. It doesn't matter if they're happy when they finish hearing the message, full of joy, or whether they get full of anger and full of hatred towards you. It really don't make a difference as long as the Word of God is preached. Amen. I preach it. Amen. Whether they reject it or not. So he gives them another message. And they say, we still want a king. So, God tells Samuel, he said, I want you going to anoint the king. In chapter 10, verse 1, Samuel takes a vial of oil, and uh, he finds Saul. He anoints him. He tells him, amen, uh, by the way, uh, you're going to be the next king. And uh, verse 3, then thou shalt go forward from this, and thou shalt come to the plain of Tabor, and thou shalt meet thee three men going up to God to Bethel, one carrying three kids, another carrying three loaves of bread, another carrying a bottle of wine. They will salute thee and give thee two loaves of bread, and thou shalt receive in their hands. And thou shalt come to the hill of God, where the garrison of the Philistines is, shall come to pass. When thou art come to sin, thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with papyrus and taper and pipe and harp before them, and they shall prophesy. He's telling them everything God can do. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prosper with him, and thou shalt be turned into another man. man. Amen. God's going to touch you, boy. Hmm. You're going to be king. God's anointed it. Samuel does everything God says, even as an old man. And then Samuel, because he's old, and he lets his feelings get in the way. He starts really liking Saul. Matter of fact, it comes from like to loving this young man. Amen. Uh, late in his life. And so Saul's fixing to go into battle. And Samuel, because he's old, is late. He was supposed to show up at a certain time. Saul got impatient, King Saul. He said, well, let's just make an offering to the Lord. We don't need the old man anymore. Right. Did you get that? Yep. Yeah, he's out of touch with his sons. He's out of touch with his family. He's out of touch with the elders. He's out of touch with his own ministry. He's even out of touch with the new king. But God's still using him. Amen. And Samuel shows up and he says, what have you done? Well, I was afraid the people were, you know, they were all starting to leave me and I was afraid they were going to leave me for good. And so I, I, I forced myself. And, uh, you know, because after all, you were late, old man. You're going to blame the old preacher. Hey, it's hard getting around when you're old, amen. You walk a little slower. You know, you wake up with a body ache and it ain't going away. Oh, I guess I got to deal with this now. Amen. Amen. Yep. That's just the way it is. So Samuel tells Saul, listen, God is not going to let you be king. He's going to find a man after his own heart. Mm -hmm. So another time comes up, King Saul, Samuel comes up to him and says, all right, I got another chance now. God said, go over there and kill all the, uh, I forgot which tribe it was and he says, I want you to go over there and kill them all and uh, utterly destroy them, kill every man, every woman, every child, every livestock. And King Saul and his army go over there. They kill everybody except 
It's partial obedience to bring the best livestock back. They bring the king back alive. And Samuel shows up and says, why do I hear these sheep? He said, I hear sheep. Hmm. I hear all this livestock. What happened? Well, I've done what the Lord said. No, you didn't. Amen. You didn't do it. He said, uh, you, were, you know, God is not interested. Well, we're going to sacrifice. He said, the Lord, God's not interested in sacrifice. He wants obedience. He wants you just to obey. If God speaks to your heart, tells you to do something, just do it. And the old man is there trying to prove a point. Amen? Amen. Listen, I'm old. I'm decrepit. Right. I'm out of touch. I'm completely out of touch with everything. But I'm still going to keep on serving God. Amen. I'm still going to preach what he says. I'm still going to tell you exactly what God said, whether you like it or not. Amen. That's right. He told him, he said, listen. You've sinned. God's chosen somebody else. And so I said, listen, I, I, forgive me. You know, I've sinned against the Lord. Would you please come pray with me so the people don't leave? He still cares more about his job than he does serving God. Hmm. He could have said, you know, okay, I... I Whoever's king, I, I'll follow him. Me and my men will follow him. We'll do whatever he said. Now, he likes his position. He likes his position. Men in power, they don't, they're not always easy to give it up. Once they're in there, mm -hmm. amen. Amen. I know my pastor used to tell me all the time, he said, you see that church over there? He says it's going down and going down because the old man refuses to retire. I don't know how many times he's told me that mm. over and over and over again. So he tells them, Saul rip, winds up stepping on Samuel's clothes to get rent and got tore. And Samuel says, God has torn the kingdom from you and given somebody else. In 1 Samuel 16, verse 1, this is the second time he's mourning. The Lord said unto Samuel, How long will thou mourn for Saul, seeing he's rejected him from reigning over Israel? When are you going to quit crying? When are you going to quit weeping? Mm. It's time to quit. This old man had just come to terms with, we're going to have a king, all right? People ain't listening to me, so we're going to get a king. He falls in love with the king, King Saul. Now he's mourning. I just can't believe you're not going to use this man. Can't you give him another chance, Lord? Can't you give him another chance? Gonna do it. Mm. Gonna find me another young man. He said, uh, Seeing that I was re rejecting him from being over Israel, fill thy horn of oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemites, or provide me a king among his sons. God said, Listen, get up, old man. I ain't finished with your ministry yet. Did you get that? Yep. Get up. I know you're weeping, I know you're crying. I know things haven't gone the way you, you wanted. I know you're weeping over your sons because they they didn't come out the way you thought they were going to come out. I know you're weeping over your ministry because you didn't expect your ministry, amen, not to have any effect the last 20 years. I know right. you're weeping over the new king because he will not walk by faith. He's only walking by sight. I reject him. Hmm. Find somebody else. I get up and go do go finish what I said. Amen. Samuel said, How can I go if Saul hear it? He will kill me. And the Lord said, Well, you're going undercover. Take a heifer with thee and say, I come to sacrifice to the Lord. And call Jesse the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Verse 4, chapter 16. Samuel did which the Lord spake and went to Bethlehem. And the elders of town trembled as coming, come and south peacefully. See, the old man still had, they all knew. He still got the power of God all over him, amen? <laughs> amen. This old man, you cannot, amen, trip up. Because if he gets to praying, amen, if he gets to praying, bad things are going to happen to us, amen? Because we're completely out of the will of God. You can come here peacefully. I mean, you, know, you, ain't, gonna, you ain't come to destroy them. Anybody told you what we've been doing? So he goes over there. And he anoints him. He anoints, he finally finds David. David's out to take care of the sheep. 
His own daddy didn't believe that God would use him. He just brought his other boys. But God has a way of looking at men and finding man and saying, you'll be the next. You'll take over. You'll be the new king. Mm -hmm. Samuel continues on going. He continues serving the Lord all the way to the day he dies. He even comes back when uh, Saul calls a witch to call Samuel back up. He said, what are you calling me for? You going to be over here with me to amen mm -hmm. tomorrow? You're going to die. You and your boys in battle. Samuel just was faithful all the way to the end. Even though he was completely out of touch, mm -hmm. he was still in touch. Amen. Did you get that? Yeah, amen. He may be out of touch with his family. He may be out of touch with his ministry. He may be out of touch, amen, with the elders and the king and everything else. But one thing about Samuel, he was not out of touch with God. Amen. He was going to serve him till the day he died. There might be little pity parties here and there. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't for him. It was for his, for King Saul. He said, I love that boy. I know he's done wrong. I know he wasn't obedient. Yep. Things didn't happen the way they were supposed to happen. That doesn't mean I don't love him still. I got some people like that. They'd love to stab me in the back right now. Hmm. I still love him. Amen. I still care for him. That's right. I still want the best. I don't want anything to do with their lives. I mean, don't get me wrong. But there's some people out there that I still love, care about, minister to, and uh, all they want to see is me get hurt. You know what you got to do? Just keep going on. All you can do is pray for them. Amen. I'm pretty sure Samuel prayed for Saul. But God sent Saul, you know, uh, he no longer had the, the, the touch of God on his life. David did after that war. Samuel got a bunch of evil spirits. They had to find somebody to play some music for him, hmm. calm him down. Even the servants knew. But you got to find somebody to play some music to get these evil spirits off of our king. The old man kept on praying for him. Nothing ever happened. When he and Saul got to heaven, uh, he, he could say, the old man prayed for you every day. Right. Every day. You know, sometimes when you get older, that's all you can do is pray. Amen. Yeah. And keep serving God. Keep saying and preaching the messages. If that's what he wants you to do, keep preaching. Keep mm -hmm. preaching the old message, you know, the messages God says. And keep doing what God says, even if your life is in danger. He said, my life will be in danger if I go down there and do this. God said, well, we're going to go undercover. But you're going to do it anyway. And the old man said, okay, that's what you want. I'm going to do it. He went all the way to the end. And the people mourned for Samuel. When Tom Landry, head coach of Dallas, finally died, the whole city of Dallas just shut down for a week. The same man that they didn't want anymore. They mourned for him. Hmm. They mourned. He was like a like a daddy to us, the players said. The people said he was like a father to us. You gotta make up your mind whether you're young, middle aged, getting older, and mm -hmm. old. I'm gonna serve God. Amen. I'm follow God in the good times, the bad times, and the rejected times. Even when they won't listen to the message and take the message to heart, I'm still going to keep preaching. Amen. Even if I'm out of touch with my family, out of touch with my ministry, out of touch with the elders, out of touch with the people, even out of touch with my own Christianity, I'm going to serve God the rest of my life. Amen. The day I die. Amen. I'm going to make up my mind. I'm going to serve him. No matter what. 
So you Man. got family problems? Welcome to the club. You got right. financial problems? Welcome to the club. You got health problems? Welcome to the club. <laughs> you getting older? Amen. Welcome to the club. Amen. Amen. You better right. make up your mind. It doesn't matter. I am going to serve God. Amen. That's right. But there'll be times you're going to weep. Oh, yeah. There'll be times you'll have to. Amen. God, I have to come to you just like Elijah. What are you doing in the cave? Get up. I got work for you to do. Okay. I'll keep going. He did the same thing to Sam. Hey, I know you hurt. I know you don't like what I just did. And sometimes, if you'll be honest, you, you won't even like some of the things God does. Amen? Right. You won't like the decisions. I know everybody's not supposed to not like what God does, but I'm just telling you, sometimes God has to get a little radical for you to get straight with the Lord. Amen. 70 years of slavery. That's going pretty extreme, amen, for y'all to get right. Right. Your generation's hopeless. I'm going to all be slaves. Next generation's going to get old over there. The <laughs> third generation, they're going to come back. <laughs> you say, that's pretty hard. Mm -hmm. Nobody liked that decision one bit, amen. Not even the preacher that's preaching it. But you know what? People didn't listen. They died. They died fighting. This old man, he made up his mind. I'm going to serve God no matter what. Amen. No matter if a family, family member drops out, I'm going to serve God. No matter if my ministry goes down to nothing, I'm going to keep going on. No matter what, I am going to serve God. Amen. And in the end, it'll be worth it all. Amen. People go, boy, man, what a preacher. What a preacher. And I mean, that old man could still get a hold of God. His walk, he was out of touch with everything out, but he wasn't out of touch with God. And God kept him close. And God only revealed what he needed to have in his life. Never revealed to him his ministry wasn't going anywhere for 20 years. Would have hurt that man. Hmm. But he finally revealed it when he got old. They haven't rejected you. They've rejected me. This world's getting crazier and crazier every day. That's right. They may reject you. You know what you got to do? Just go on with the Lord. Just keep serving God. And God will be there for you and Amen. help you, thank you my Lord. and bless you. Yes, thank you, my Lord. You know what you got to make up your mind? You, Am I willing to be like Samuel and just keep going? Yes. Even though I'm out of touch with everything, I will not be out of touch with God. Make up your mind. This is what I want. I want God. You want anything else. Father, we love you. I pray Lord, God you help us to be like Samuel. Make up our minds. Yes, serve you, no matter what, even when we make bad decisions, even, Lord, when we make the wrong calls, even, Lord, uh, no matter what happens, we're out of touch with everything. Help us never be out of touch with you. I pray, God, you'd help us just to stay close by your side. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Appreciate you listening in. See you Wednesday night, 7.30. Amen. Amen.